Hello, my dear students. This is JRB sir, physics teacher. First of all, I would like to convey my best wishes to you all for successfully completing your higher secondary first year examinations. You might have known that the plus two physics mark is very very important for your higher education and also for your brightful future life. Therefore. I am going to be a part in your life and going to teach you plus two physics for making better understanding the physics concepts. I hope that my teaching and guidance will be very useful to you in order to score center marks in your plus two physics exam. My dear students, in your life, you have to ever remember that the value of time. Actually, the life is like a river. You cannot touch the same water twice because the flow that has passed will never pass again. So don't try to waste your time. I always inspired by the hero of Wings of Fire, Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam's words. According to him, all of us not having equal talents, but all of us are having equal opportunities to develop our talents. In this digital world, everybody can enrich their knowledge. For that, there are lot of resources are available in internet. Therefore, you start watching continuously my YouTube channel and enrich your physics knowledge in great manner. You know, the sea is common for all. Some tack pearls, some tack fishes, some come out with just wet legs. Likewise, the world is common to all, but we get what we try for. So set your ambition first in your plus two physics subject and be trying to achieve the same. Whenever your involvement is deeper than sea and your ambition is taller than mountain, then your future will be brighter than sun. Vidiyum yendru vinnai nambum ni, mudiyum yendru unnai nambu, vinnai pol pragasipai, yendrum valthukaludan, ungal GRB sir. Hello my dear students. Welcome to my channel Physics by GRB sir. The first lesson in our plus two physics subject is electrostatics. Static means rest. This unit deals with the behavior and other related phenomena of charges at rest. You know that there are two types of charges, namely positive charge and another one is negative charge. Now you are going to know how to charge an object. Basically, we are using the two methods in order to charge an object. The first method is friction method and the second method is induction method. In friction method, we are charging the object through rubbing. This method which is also called triboelectric charging. In induction method, we are charging the object without actual contact. Let us discuss this method later. Now, you can have a doubt, uh, my dear students. Sir, why should we study this electrostatics? In your day-to-day -day life, you have seen many machines like uh, Xerox machine, laser printer, inkjet printer, then uh, powder printer, um, air purifier, spray painting, uh, touchpad of the laptop, then uh, keyboards. So likewise, uh, you have seen many machines. And uh, everything is uh, working with the principle of electrostatics only. Today, there is a huge development in engineering and uh, technology. So after the plus two, you can go for studying engineering course or science course. In the future, uh, you can uh, become as a good engineer or scientist and uh, when you work in a R&D department in a company or industry, suppose uh, you are employed to design a machine or instrument for the social use, then the knowledge of this electrostatic will be very very useful to you. So that's what you have to study well this electrostatic lesson. Okay, students, now uh, let us come to the point. So, first uh, let us uh, start to discuss the frictional electricity. The frictional electricity was discovered by Thales, a Greek philosopher in 600 BC. Right. 
So, uh, actually, uh, Thales uh, did an experiment with uh, amber and uh, fur. Amber is a uh, resin of a fossilized uh, tree and uh, which is uh, rubbed with uh, fur. Then amber got a special characteristics to attract some pieces of paper and the dust. It was a very first observation to understand the charging behavior of material. So likewise, um, when a balloon is uh, rubbed against uh, human hair, then the balloon will be negatively charged. So when the balloon is uh, held near the wall, it uh, stick on it a uh, few seconds. So from this, uh, we can come to understand that the balloon is charged. So that's what it uh, sticks on wall. So whenever a glass rod is uh, rubbed with uh, silk, the glass rod will acquire the positive charges and the silk acquires the negative charges. When the rubber rod is rubbed with a wool, the rubber rod will acquire the negative charges at the same time the wool will acquire the positive charges. So in this phenomena Actually, we are not uh, telling the charges are created or produced. So, actually here, no charges are created or produced. Because we can't uh, produce any charge. In our universe, already the charge is there. According to the conservation law of charges, no one can produce the charge and no one can destroy the charge. Okay, sir, what is happening here? Here, the charges are just transferring from one material to another material. So, the transferring is very, very important word. You have to remember ever. Basically, the atoms are electrically neutral. Before rubbing, the atoms are neutral in glass rod as well as in silk material. After the rubbing only, they are charged. After the rubbing, the glass rod is positively charged and the silk is negatively charged. And the rubber rod is negatively charged and the wool is positively charged after the rubbing. Right. Sir, why do we call the atoms are electrically neutral? You know that the atom is uh, composed of nucleus and electrons. The nucleus at the center of the atom and the electrons are revolving around the atom in various orbit. So at the nucleus, there are protons and neutrons. The charge of the proton is positive and charge of the neutron is zero. That is a neutron has neutral charge and the charge of the electron is negative. So if you take an atom, the number of protons and the number of electrons will be equal. Suppose uh, if there is a uh, 5 uh, proton means uh, there will be 5 electron. So if you calculate the net charge, it will become 0. So that's what we are uh, calling the atoms are electrically neutral. Okay, sir. Suppose the atom is uh, lost some electron. Then what will happen? The atom will become positive charge. Suppose atom gains one electron from externally, then what will happen? The atom will become a negative charge. Right. So, in this case, 
when the glass rod is uh, rubbed with uh, silk the silk is uh, gaining some electrons from the glass rod so that's what the silk acquire the acquires the negative charges the glass rod actually loses some electrons so that's what it is positively charged right in a 18th century benjamin franklin who was one of the scientists who only classified first the types of charges he told that there are two types of charges namely positive charge and negative charge from one experiment actually he took a uh, negatively charged rubber rod he took a negatively charged rubber rod and uh, this uh, rubber rod is uh, suspended by means of the silk thread and uh, he took another negatively charged rubber rod and uh, brought near to first one and he observed that they repelled each other in a second observation he took a glass rod i mean positively charged glass rod and it is uh, suspended um, by means of the silk thread and uh, negatively charged rubber rod is uh, brought uh, near to it and uh, he observed that they attract each other right so from this observation he concluded the like charges repel and uh, unlike charges attract so it is a very 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 important conclusion he gave to the world so unlike charges attracts so it is the basic uh, property of the charge like charges repel so by using the basic uh, properties nowadays the xerox machines laser printers so spray paintings everything is working thank you my dear students indha video ungalku pidichirundhuchuna like pannunga share pannunga marakama channel la subscribe pannunga thank you